This is an All Sports Station production. Today, from U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, this is Madden NFL 21 on EA Sports. It's the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. A very warm day outside by Minnesota standards, but then again, it is still summer. Either way, the AC is working just fine at U.S. Bank Stadium in the Twin Cities. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Here now to get us started is Logan Cook, and we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. Now K.J. Osborne. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Vikings ready to go to work, led out by their quarterback in his third year wearing purple, ninth year overall in the NFL, a pro bowler in Kirk Cousins. Leadership skills, apparent early in his life, carried over not just in high school, but in college where he was a three-time captain of the Michigan State Spartans and learned the art of the comeback early in his career there and actually capped off his career with a big comeback in a bowl game before going off to the NFL. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. And now we'll get a timeout. Looks like we've got a Jaguar and some discomfort down there on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Cook. That one, a first down pickup of eight. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. Now a handoff looking right. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Now a run with Cook. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. 
Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now Cook, he's got it off the draw. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now here's the first carry for Amir Abdullah. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards. And it'll bring up a third and two more. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. First carry now for Alexander Madison. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. And, partner, when you run the ball on third and two, you're telling the whole world you've got nothing but confidence in your offensive line and your runner, and you expect to get it. But they were stuffed on that play. Only got one yard. Great job by the defensive front, the linebackers. Everyone got involved to force a fourth down. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on to punt. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. So here are the Jaguars now with a long field ahead. They'll be led out by their quarterback, Mike Glennon, who played his college ball at North Carolina State. I love his height. It allows him to see receivers running through the secondary, allows him to make good decisions, and deliver the ball downfield. Now a first and 10 at the 11. They'll try and start this drive in the air. The catch made by James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. scrimmage just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever second and ten that time on the outside pretty nice job as a cornerback to shed any would-be blockers and make the tackle and think about the praise we're giving him what his coaches are giving but how about the respect he gets from his teammates to be a complete corner who doesn't just cover receivers but also tackles ball carriers now a handoff here to his running back that'll leave him with a third and two coming up they got eight yards there and after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. They'll go to the air here on third and two. Able to complete this to Chanel. 
And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talk to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here is big. Back to throw now on first down. Going right side here, and that's complete. Seven yards, the pick up there. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where a play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. They were ahead of schedule after the gain of seven on first down, but the defense does not budge on second and third. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep for Minnesota, Chad Beebe. feels like he felt like he had to call it on that play. A lack of discipline defensively on fourth down, and now that leads to a first and ten. Going to give this time to the tailback. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Line of scrimmage, the 36 on second and eight. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Connection made with Chanel. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. you still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. That's going to set him back five yards. Oh, 
Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Looking to throw on second down. Glennon, and he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Eric Kendricks coming in hard there on the blitz, and he gets him seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Enough takes to start to have a good drive, quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So the ref takes a peek here, wants to see if the receiver had possession and both feet inbounds. If this were a college game, this would be a legal catch. It's the second foot that they're looking at to make sure it gets down. Cap cap two inbounds in the NFL. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. So the opening drive does yield points, maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. now to kick this one away and off it goes fielded a couple yards into the end zone and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped it to 23 yeah, yeah, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 23. They start the drive with Abdullah. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Here's Madison. 
And some room to work. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 15 yards on the play, first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run it with Madison. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. Second down and eight. They'll run with Madison. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he'll punt it away for the second time. officially and it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory so time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game and they had a long drive last time but they had to settle for a field goal and I'm sure that's how it felt to them settling they probably should have gotten in the end zone yeah not out now joy right because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone but there are benefits to that type of a long drive your defense gets a chance to take a break adjust a little bit maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better so they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points yeah, maybe wore down the other defense Defense. We'll see. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And he'll give it here to his running back. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. game working now stick with it on first down and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage he'll lose a yard there and it's second and 11. sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field you got to make the right diagnosis here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield Second and 11 now. Now a handoff here to his running back. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. 3-0 after one on EA Sports.
The Jets, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and eight. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. A couple of first downs have him to the 40 now on first and 10. He'll look to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. But I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. He's going to try and take off with it. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Not none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards of carry at the moment. Coming up on second and seven. throw is incomplete. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing into coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. going to be incomplete the contact there enough to jar that ball free and it brings up fourth down from a defensive perspective they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football there was pressure on the quarterback they were getting after him and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. Chad Beebe deep to return. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, Everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at about the 32. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Open here, Adam Thielen. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. And that makes it hard to defend. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Running from the gun, it's Abdullah. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. 
They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. They go play action. Cousins. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. Nice job there of utilizing his big target. He didn't overthink it. Understands the catch radius. Understands that he knows how to use his body to keep defenders away from the ball. And puts it right out there for the nice pickup. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Going on the ground with Madison. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Now a give to Madison. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. The Vikings on third down, just one for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. On the handoff, it's Madison. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up a run the darn ball and pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school, smash mouth football. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and 10. They run with Abdullah. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. On play action, Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. No gain that time on the completion, and it'll be third down. Now, the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now, with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. On third down, Cousins. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Jackson goes past defense, holds serve, fourth down. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. I may be an analyst, but I'm also a fan. I love it when people take the big shots downfield, but he was under a lot of duress, and I think that forced the incompletion downfield. Didn't have a real good chance to find his target. So Cousins heads to the Vikings sideline, and on is Dan Bailey to try the field goal. 
On the left hash mark, this a 38-yard attempt. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will tie us at 3-3. Three -three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone, get you six? Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Now Glennon. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. There to knock that one away defensively, Eric Kendricks. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. From the 21, it's second and 10. Glennon firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's a first down on a gain of 10. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Shamar Stefan there on the tackle. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game. Or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. And now the throw taken in by Chark and brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Shotgun snap as they look to throw. A ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And the return this time will go out to the 42-yard line. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. On first down, Abdullah. Dropped at the 35, but he was able to display the agility there. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other. 
and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? On second down, this is Madison. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. It's a first down on a gain of 10. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Shotgun handoff. This is Abdullah. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. That's a nice run, a nice game that has to have them feeling pretty good about themselves as we head to the two-minute warning. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need, right? need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Seven yards there and a first down. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. First red zone chance now for the Vikings. It's first and 10 at the 14. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And it's caught inside the five. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Consecutive catches for him. That good for 11. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Broke yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson, and the Vikings have taken the lead. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do with good field position. You make the other side pay when you don't have far to go for the score. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. Kick it away after the touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. Just a lone field goal for them so far, trailing 10-3 as they come up first and 10. Trying to 
shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts yeah, yeah, as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Shamar Stephan, what a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a strong first half for the veteran quarterback, Kirk Cousins. His guys have the lead, as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. Taken in at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. They'll take this to the other side of midfield before going oh, out yeah. of bounds. 15 yards on the play, first down. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. And they run the option here on first and ten. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Brought down by D.J. Wanham. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. And that'll set him back five. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. They'll look to throw here. Throwing right, and that's complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. And he's going to try and do this himself. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass, but in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Rosa's kick is good. And that'll bring them back within four. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory.
The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Here's Osborne. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. And it really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything's working pretty well for the defensive yeah, what's guy. what's going on on the defensive That's side? That's a tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 24. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Again, it's Cook. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. It'll be a 44-yard punt. The return goes for eight. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. The Jaguars back with it on offense. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 38. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this one into the hands of D.J. Sharp. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And able to give one man the slip there as he works his way forward for about three. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. 
Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. And that is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 21. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 10 yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. The killer here, it's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Here's Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board. Those are the plays they need to continue to convert. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. And a short gain down to about the 33. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold them to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. Three. 
Throwing on second and eight. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Throwing Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It's a gain of seven, and it'll make it a second down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Back to the ground. Cook. Looking for a crease. Can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. They'll run again. This time it's a dual look. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. Bailey's kick is good. And that'll open the lead up to a touchdown now at 13 to 6. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. And that is incomplete here. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll look to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. 
And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. He dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. And here comes Beebe. Before they can get the punt away, whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. A throw left side to start out. That's complete. Not much there, only a yard. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, Using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? You just <laughs> give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. They run it again with Cook. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. the run with Cook. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? From just shy of midfield, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. On first down, Cook. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. Play fake. Cousins. And Rudolph has it. The tight end. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. 
And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Cook, and this looks a lot like the last play. Behind the line of scrimmage, he's tackled for the second straight go-around. Great job by this Jacksonville D. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. Vikings on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and 14. To throw is Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. And he's gonna get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that would make this a 10-point game at 16 to 6. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game. His third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game. So they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. his feet were, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. To throw on second and 10. Glennon, the Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Remember, throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. The Jaguars on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This will be third and forever. 
Now Glennon. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Dalvin Cook taking the field for the Vikings' next possession. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah, in this case, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. They run again on first down, Cook. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. The tackle made by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. Well, it's hard to have vision as a runner and find a hole when there's nothing but defenders in your way. They stacked that one up really well. But give him credit. Instead of trying to bounce it out and turn it into a big play, which might have turned into a big loss, Kai just took his medicine there and took the one yard. On second and nine, Cousins keeps himself upright. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Throwing his Cousins. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. When that ball popped free, we could hear it all the way up here. Those guys down on the field alerting everyone to the fumble. He's lucky that his offensive mates picked him up and jumped on him. Yeah, and you have to think to yourself, and I'm sure they've been echoing it on the sideline and into the huddle. Guys, we have the lead. Just take care of the football. Don't make it easier for them to start to make a comeback. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And take it right on the 30. A nice punt, but a good run back as well of 13 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. 
And I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. To throw once more on second and ten. Glennon. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Five yards, now it's third and five. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. play on the completion got them half of what they needed now here's a tough third and five now a shotgun snap as they look to throw to the left side here for Eifert and he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first they stop him for only three that time and that'll bring up fourth down and we're definitely getting towards the point of the game where not getting a lot of yards is secondary to keeping the clock moving I mean to me that's a double win defensively short gain and some more time off the clock. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll try and run for it. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Fourth and short, they had the ball right at the midfield stripe. Was curious what they were going to do. Turns out going for it, the good play. Reminded me of a conversation we had yesterday before this game where you said, you know, it's interesting about the NFL nowadays. Oftentimes in short yard situations, they throw the ball. In the old days, they would run it. That was an old school call right there. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Now try and wind down some clock with Cook. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. 
They'll keep it on the ground. Cook. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as he'll talk it over here before what'll be an important third down. gives way to Cook and a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47 yard line the Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on for the fifth time here today He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. So now the Jags down by 10, a minute 40 remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In this situation, the dictation is coming from the defense, right? They're going to tell you. You can have six, seven yards. Do that all the way downfield. Let's just go ahead and take the time off the clock. I think they've got to start attacking vertically a lot more. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. And Eiffel has it. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. They'll look to throw now on first down. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of a defense. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw again. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Complete to the right side. It's Eifert. And give him six yards here as he's stopped near the 35 at the 34. They get six, that third and four. They'll remember it's also third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found 
found a way to pick up a first down. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.